Today we're going to be looking at Strawberry Leopard in the color Euphoric Pink. I've been getting so many requests to do this brand, so I'm very excited to try it. So I have my swatches labeled 1 through 12, but that is not synonymous with hair levels. I do different pictures and video clips near the end of the video, so the numbers just help us keep track of each color. One is green. Red and green are across from each other on the color wheel, so I wanted to see if the pink would cover the green at all. Two is gray. Three is a natural red. Four is black. So four to 11 is a range that goes to platinum blonde. And then 12 is like a toned version of number 11. So to start, I will take the dye and I will put it directly on the top of each swatch. Some people do like to dilute their dyes, so I will do a diluted version at the bottom of each swatch. I just wanna say, I don't know what it is about this, but it smells so good to me. I really can't pinpoint it. Like I'm not very good at identifying notes within perfumes and stuff, but it's just unique enough, but not so different. I don't know, it's so interesting, <laughs> but I really like it. Anyways, please keep in mind, everyone's hair is different, which means everyone's hair will take color differently. Plus different screens and monitors can make a color look different especially undertone so please just use my video as a reference for how this could possibly turn out for you For the diluted section, we're going to do a 1 to 2 ratio, so that is one part dye to two parts diluter. This color lightened up really fast, so I'm worried that I added too much diluter, but we'll have to wait and see. If you're confused on what diluter is, usually each brand will have their own diluter. You'll just have to look on their website for it, um, but essentially it's just something that lightens the color of the dye. And to keep things more fair, I always just use the same plain white conditioner for diluting, which you can too if you'd like. I wanna give this some time to really absorb the color, so I'm gonna let it sit for three hours. I will then rinse it out, and when it's dry, I will meet you back here and we'll do some comparisons. So I think I did forget to mention earlier in the video that the only swatch here that's going to be virgin hair is the number four swatch. The rest have been chemically colored. So the reason that matters is because virgin hair tends to not take semi-permanent colors as well as previously dyed hair. And I do think that kind of plays a role in this. Like I said, this lightened up very quickly. Normally I do a one to four ratio when I'm diluting, but it lightened up so fast that I decided to do a one to two ratio instead. So essentially Essentially all I'm saying is that if you have anything darker than like the platinum blonde, it may not stay in your hair either. The more porous the hair, the better it will grab onto hair color. Also, I know I said I really like the smell of this stuff and I do, but I'm also the kind of person who really likes when my stuff is very fragrant. And if you are someone who doesn't, um, this is my warning that it might be a lot because it was kind of strong, even though it was pleasant. I really, really like this shade of pink. It's a lot more cool toned than a lot of the pinks that I've done in the past. 
past. So on the number one swatch, that one was green. I do feel like it covered on the top. It kind of has a like muted dusty purple, maybe like a mauve color. And then the bottom is a little bit patchy. So if you have very green hair, I wouldn't recommend diluting this. You might want a different color if you're trying to get the green out of your hair as well. Number two was gray. That one turned out the most cool toned out of all of the swatches. It has a very almost purple look, but it's still not quite purple. I find it kind of interesting because when I I was swatching the hair dye after I diluted it versus before I diluted it. Like I said, it looked extremely light. When I did the one to four ratio, I wasn't even sure if it was going to dye the hair, which is why I did the one to two ratio. But on some swatches, like the number two, it really doesn't look that much lighter, but I can tell down the strand a little bit, it struggled to dye the hair kind of like it did on number one. I feel like for diluted sections, the best is 11 and 12. 10 is not bad either. It's just that the 11 and 12 look like they held on to the color the best and it looks the most uniform. So number three was the natural red. A lot of the times the natural red kind of turns out very similar to the brown swatches, but today I think the red actually helped to warm up the dye a lot. It almost gives it like a punch of color. <laughs> Um, again, four was the virgin hair and it was black, so there's no difference. Honestly, five, six, and seven are not wildly different. They all still kind of have a brown look to them and I think maybe it's the undertone that changes a little bit on the direct eye. And then on the bottom half, you can see that there is a slight undertone difference, especially on number seven, but it still looks relatively brown. So if you have brown hair, I probably wouldn't recommend diluting this. And again, it might not stay in your hair, even if it does dye. So basically with this color, the lighter your hair gets, the more cool toned it looks. And then obviously if it's not yellow underneath like the gray one, it's gonna look even more cool toned. Like eight, nine, and 10, they all have a much warmer appearance compared to 11 and 12. And it's not quite as bright looking. The number 11 almost has a neon quality to it. I mean, it's not neon because I've had other colors that are neon and I can tell it's not, but it is extremely bright and saturated. I almost feel actually like the diluted versions on like eight and nine especially look like a more pinky version of a rose gold. And then as it gets lighter, it kind of goes into like a bubblegum pink, which is really cute. And if you're wondering, I know that colors like this that are very bright and neon are sometimes UV reactive. So I did try it, but it doesn't really do anything um, because the lighter swatches have like the blondeness. It does light up a tiny bit, but it's it's not like a UV reactive dye would, in case you were wondering. And also uh, I will say too, I don't know if you saw in the beginning of the video or not, because I haven't edited this yet, but I noticed that straight out of the the container the dye is much more warm toned and then as it sits on the hair it really starts to look more cool toned so if you buy this yourself don't be too alarmed at the color that it is when it comes out but of course you should still probably do a strand test so this one is going to be a little bit more unique to my collection but i still want to compare it to other similar colors like cool tone pinks that i have so the first comparison i wanted to do was to arctic fox in the color virgin pink this is comparable to number 12 number 11 and number 10. So virgin pink is one of the more cool toned pinkies that I have. And I feel like on number 10, they don't look too different, but on the 11 and 12, the euphoric pink definitely has a brighter quality to it. Virgin pink seems to run just a little bit darker and actually looks maybe a drop more warm toned, just a little bit. You might be able to see a difference on the diluted sections. Um, it's not a huge difference, like I said, but to me, the virgin pink does look just a little bit warmer. Now, I don't know if it's because of the cool tones in the pink or not. Obviously, I, I didn't make the dye, but it is less pigmented. Virgin pink, on the other hand, is a very, very pigmented pink. So I would say that if you have darker hair, the virgin pink is probably going to work a little bit better for you. But if you have platinum blonde hair, then you probably don't have to worry about it too much. And that would just depend on the look that you want. I have a different cool toned pink that's also more saturated because I do have some cool toned pinks that are like light pink pastelis. Trying to stay away from those. So the other one I wanted to compare was Manic Panic in the color Hot Hot Pink. This is comparable to number 12, number 11, and number 10. Okay, so these are clearly not <laughs> 
as similar. The virgin pink is a lot closer in color. Hot Hot Pink is marketed as a cool toned pink and by itself it does look like a cool toned pink but it is also UV reactive so that could be why it is the color that it is. It's meant to be much more bright and neon looking um, and I don't really know how UV things work so I don't know if to have a UV color it needs to be more on the orangey side. I'm not really sure but as you can probably see the euphoric pink is definitely not quite as like neon looking even though by itself it is a very bright looking color and it's a lot brighter looking than the virgin pink it's definitely not as bright as hot hot pink <laughs> and now i'm wondering if the pastel pink would have been a better comparison but hopefully this helped someone all right so now i'd like to get into the before and after clips those as well as anything you see after this point in this video will all be done in natural lighting I hope this video helped. If you have a request, I do have a link below to a Google form you can fill out. Just remember, I only do brands that do not test on animals. Thank you so, so much to my patrons and thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.